I'm all alone in this apartment. These ghosts are gonna come kill me and I can't run away because I'm hurt. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to my escape. I realize it's the end of November, I do know that. However, we're gonna do my October wrap up. Okay, we're almost caught up, we're almost there. So at the beginning of October, I did post a TBR video of five books that I wanted to read, so we'll go through that and see how I did there, and then we'll get into everything else I tackled for the month. But first, don't forget to like and subscribe. I post videos every Friday, sometimes on Tuesdays when I'm feeling it, so ring that bell for notifications and you won't miss anything, and let's get into the video. So starting with the TBR, I hate TBR lists because as soon as I put it on a list, it feels like homework and I don't want to read it anymore, and that's really not the goal of Welcome to My Escape. Usually what I'm doing here on this channel is escaping homework, so I don't love making my reading feel like homework. However, it was October, there was things I wanted to get off my shelves, off the list, and just things I was generally wanting to read with the spooky vibes. So I set up a TBR, I think there was only five books on it, and it was manageable, and um, I didn't do great on it, I didn't do great on it at all. So just kind of going through that. Um, I did want to go through the Mindfuck series again and read that one. I skimmed it to my favorite parts, but then I didn't want to like wreck it for myself and I wasn't really in like a revenge plot mood so I put that one down. I did start The Silent Patient and then and I just never picked it up again. I think I was only like a chapter or so in. Um, the Huntress I realized I couldn't read because although it's the first of the third volume I never read the second volume so that's like three books in the series ahead of where I'm at. I just didn't look at the Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies one. <laughs> and I did try Jealousy's a Witch on Kindle but after about 6% of that book, I said, this is not for me. I already know I'm going to hate it. And I just permanently put that one down. So the one book I did read off the TBR was The House of Salt and Sorrows. So this is a YA fantasy thriller, fantasy horror, something in there. Um, this was off my currently reading list. I picked it up last October and then it was too slow to get into. So I put it down and then I wanted to wait for spooky season again. So I picked it up this October. I don't think I realized how spooky this actually was or how spooky this was actually gonna be. It is a Twelve Dancing Princesses retelling, which is why I bought it originally because one of my favorite books is another Twelve Dancing Princesses retelling, but this is so much darker, okay? So Twelve Dancing Princesses, you've got 12 princesses, they've lost their mother and they've been in mourning forever. And they find a way to secretly dance and like celebrate in the castle without the king finding out because the king is like set on keeping everyone in mourning. So that's like the 12 dancing princesses. So take that, put it on the seaside in this really creepy manner, open the book, three of the sisters are already dead in with some suspicious circumstances, opening on the funeral of the third or the fourth sister, and then our main character is going, hmm, this doesn't seem right, let me try to figure out what's going on and how I can protect my family. And then she gets pulled into like a well of like, are there gods? Is it magic? Is it madness? We don't know. Ah, you just get sucked right in there, sucked right in there. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Had me on the edge of the seat all the way through. I could have done without the epilogue, but that's that's a regular occurrence for me. Absolutely adored this book, would highly recommend. It is spooky for me. If you read a lot of spooky things, take that with a grain of salt because I don't, I don't love being scared. So it might not be that spooky for you, but for me, very spooky, very spooky. So I injured my leg in the like last half of October kind of thing and it was reading week and my roommate had gone home so it was just me at the apartment and I was like you know what I should do the night before Halloween on October 30th? I should read this because the audio came up on my library. I thought I could get some chores done, I thought I could like do my little exercises and everything for like recovery. When I say I literally just curled up under a blanket on the couch and just listened to the audiobook, I am not lying, okay? I did not move, okay? I was so immersed. That audiobook was so good. That's the scene, okay? October 30th, I'm injured. I'm in a ball on the couch. My roommate's gone. I'm listening to the audio till 2 a.m. And then I go, oh my God, <laughs> why did I do this? I can't sleep now because I'm like, I'm all alone in this apartment. These ghosts are gonna come kill me and I can't run away because I'm hurt. <laughs> so I was like, it's terrible, terrible, terrible decision of the timing. Great, great, great book. Absolutely brought me in, absolutely immersed me. I ended up giving this five stars, would highly recommend and would highly, highly, highly recommend the audiobook. 
So although that was the only thing I did read off my DBR, what I forgot to include on that list was new releases. So one book I did read that should have been on that list was Hopeless by Elsie Silver. So Hopeless is the final book in the Chestnut Spring series. I have mixed feelings about the series, but essentially it's like a small town cowboy romance series. And Bo is in the military, he got injured, he comes home, tries to like reestablish himself on the family farm. He's dealing with the trauma of the war and PTSD and um, his injury and his place in the world and all that sort of stuff. I can't remember her name, her main girl, uh, she's younger, it is a bit of an age gap, I think there's like 10 years between them or something like that. She's younger, it's very much like wrong side of the tracks girl, so everyone kind of hates her family and their criminals and thugs and thieves and all this other stuff. Uh, but she's just trying to get through life in a town that hates her simply because of her last name. So she kind of, you know, runs into Bo. She was like, oh, like, they hate me because of who I am. And Bo's like, no, they hate you because of your last name. I bet if you have a diff if you had a different last name, they'd treat you differently. And she said, bet. And then guess what? They got married, so she got a different last name. <laughs> bit of a leap, okay? <laughs> Definitely a bit of a leap there. But overall, I actually really enjoyed the story. It gave it four stars. It had its moments and I was really looking forward to Bo. I think some things I would have liked to have been a little bit different, but I did enjoy it overall. And I also read it on like the second day it came out or something like that. And I was like, damn, I am never this on top of new releases ever. You have fake dating, marriage of convenience, teach me how to, you know, age gap. He's definitely like the golden boy or the golden family boy and she's wrong side of the tracks girl. So you got a lot of fun tropes in there. I had fun with it. I would recommend. It's not my favorite of the series. That really goes to Powerless. I will not get over that, but it's also not the least favorite of the series. So four stars, pretty good. Overall, I would recommend the series. I would just say skip the first book. <laughs> skip that one and then have fun with the rest. They're just, they're an easy breezy time. And then another new release I read in October, because apparently I read two. I don't even read the new releases I want to read. And here I am reading random ones, but I didn't know this was a new release when I picked it up. So I picked up Caught Up. This is the third in the... I don't actually think I know what the series is called, but the Right Move and Mile High, those ones if you've seen them around, this is the third in that series. I picked it up because I saw an Instagram reel and it was like, single dad this that blah 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 and i was like you already got me at single dad <laughs> hence the blah 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 i don't even know what the rest of the reel said i said yes i will read this so it is a sports romance but it's baseball romance and i don't know that much about baseball so i didn't think it would like bother me as much because i wouldn't be able to tell if the author really knew baseball because i don't really know baseball but like i said he's a single dad she ends up being the nanny but really she's like this world-renowned chef that's won all these awards but her dad is his head coach and she comes home to see her dad for like the summer and the dad's like hey could you do me a favor this guy keeps firing all his nannies but he can't fire you because you're my daughter and i'm his boss so she was like, you know what? All right, I was planning on he chilling here for a couple months anyways and working on some recipes. He has a kitchen. I'll be this guy's nanny. We have a single dad nanny. And like I said, baseball romance, so sports romance. Coach's daughter. She's also like very like pushy and forceful with like what she wants. Not like in a creepy or scary way, but like she can vocalize it. And I love that in a female main character. I'm like, yes, just say what you want. Just don't beat around the bush, just go for it. So I really did appreciate that. I did end up giving it only a three star. This book was quite long and had no real reason to be. And I was kind of like smiling or whatever at the time, but like as soon as I put it down, I was like, mm, I kind of wish I had dedicated that to like that time to another book or I'm really not remembering it anyways, so wasn't the best, didn't really stick with me, but in the moment it wasn't too bad. And then I did pick up a reread this month. I don't know why. I really don't know why. But I picked up Give Me More by Sarah Kate. It's the third in the Salacious Players Club. It's probably my favorite of that series, if not tied for first place. So I did a whole review on like the series so far. Madame also got released in October, I think, and that was one I didn't read. Don't know why. But the first four or five, in, the first five in the series, I posted a review on, so I'll take that. Essentially for this book, you have a married couple and the guy is one of the four that runs the sex club and they have a best friend and he's like head of construction for the sex club. So they're all very much like involved in it. He's the couple and the best friend end up going on a road trip to scout other sex clubs across the country to come up with new ideas of stuff that he could pull off as like the construction guy and then the husband could like finance it or whatever. So they go on this road trip and then they realize on this road trip that they've actually always loved each other and need to be in a polyamorous relationship. 
So then they kind of explore that. And then when they get back to real life, they're like, oh, but this comes with consequences and maybe not all of us are ready to deal with our sexualities and maybe that needs to be addressed. So I really just enjoy them. I love the characters. I love the growth. And I would definitely recommend. I think I gave this a four star when I first read it and it would still be up there for now as well. And then into the fantasy romance. I actually read an entire series this month. Why? Start to end. I can't even get myself to finish series that I've been dying to finish, but I will start and end a series in the same month. So anyways, I had a lot of fun with it. The Dragon King's Mate is the first one, then it's the Dragon King's Hate, then it's the Dragon King's Fate. <laughs> I gave them all four stars and again I read them pretty back to back so I'm just gonna go through them all together but I picked up the first one because it was on my kindle because I got it from stuff my kindle day so I was like sure we'll go with this one how fun and then I was like oh my god I need to know what happens next and then thankfully the rest of the series is on KU so I was like whoo love <laughs> well basically the world is divided by species I, and there's like a hierarchy of species so our main girl is a vampire and they're like at the bottom of the food chain they've basically been left in this forest to rot and die out with no food no supplies no nothing and she's looking around at her sisters and she's like hey we have to come up with a plan because if we stay here any longer so if we stay here any longer we'll start dying off so we have to do something now so they come up with this plan to attract a dragon because they see a dragon flying overhead and they're like hey we bet we could get him down here and then eat him. And then they do, except instead of being able to eat him, he just scoops her up and flies away. And he says, you're mine now. So it already starts really fun. She's like, I don't want to be yours. I just want to feed my sisters. And he's like, I hate you. I hate you because you're a vampire, but also you're mine. And I cannot, cannot get over it so fun so fun so it's a sense of like fated mates so basically as soon as they like saw each other or touched or whatever they couldn't get away from each other like they could like they physically could not walk away from it physically chain appears when they get too far apart but they both hate it so he ended up being the dragon king uh, how would you know that from the title i don't know but he ended up being the dragon king and he brings this vampire back to the castle and all the other dragons are like what are you doing we don't mate we hate vampires and he's like i agree with everything you're saying but if you also look at her the wrong way i will rip your head off <laughs> we love we love so then the rest of the series i guess is just them trying to come to terms with the relationship and figure out if it's something they want to solidify or if they want to try to find a way out of um, them getting to know each other, also like a slow reveal of the world and how this hierarchy developed. But there's a lot of action in it too, so there's like another area which like are shifters, and by the sounds of it they're like werewolves, but they're like pretty high on the hierarchy too, but then there's also other continents with like demons, and there's like magical stuff that come in. Anyways, it was a blast, it was a really fun time. I really, really enjoyed it. I gave, like I said, I gave them all four stars. There's a lot of side characters with some depth or some like fun to it. I was just smiling all the way through. Did I necessarily need to crush the series as fast as I did? No. I wouldn't take that as like a hint of like, oh wow, this is so good. It was more like I was really procrastinating something at the time. But at the same time, I was happy with my procrastination tool and I did have a lot of fun with it and I would recommend because it was just, it was a little cliche and over the top and I had so much fun with it. And finally, we will end with my dark romances. So, one I picked up was Hold. It was a novella. Ah, uh, what do I even say about this one? I wouldn't call this a romance. <laughs> she gets picked up by like the galactic police and they say, you broke a law, we're dropping you on this prison planet. And there's no way off the prison planet and it's basically anarchy and you just die. But it doesn't really feel like a, pr like a planet or sci-fi whatsoever because when you're like dropped in the prison it, you're basically just dropped in like a giant prison cave so it's less like a planet and she's like ah what and then she decides that in order to have any kind of chance of surviving whatsoever she has to align herself with the strongest guy in the prison and she picks picks one and then she's like wink wink <laughs> come save me before they rip me apart and he's like okay so <laughs> So then it's just, it's just then, it's very transactional. That's why I'm like, it's really not a romance. It goes from like transactional to trauma bonding. To me, there was no love in it whatsoever. Um, and it did get kind of boring because they were in a prison like the whole time. So you had like, 
like your setting was like a cell so it wasn't that deep wasn't that interesting i mean it had its moments i wouldn't say it was a bad read it was definitely different um but i would give it like three stars just because it was a bit boring and then i, I did reread another book this month called desperate measures it is a jasmine and jafar kind of retelling but without magic so the city's divided jasmine's father controls one area and he's kind of kept jasmine like locked up basically like in this little like princess cage and really like poorly treated her and then jafar goes this is my territory now kills the dad and then he goes jasmine you're now my property and she goes oh, how dare you cage me like my father and then it's like their story from there <laughs> i don't know how much more to say without giving it away but there's some cnc in here some primal play but like to me like jasmine makes this story like just we love her her growth her outcome like her ending we love okay we love for her we wish the world for jasmine love it and then the last book i have on this list is another novella i read it for the halloween vibes it's called scream for us i read it right at the beginning of the month and i wish i didn't <laughs> But gave it two stars right on the first page it's like hey this is a more spice than plot if you don't like that like sign off now and i was like i appreciate this disclaimer okay i'm ready and then you know what it tried to do it tried to throw plot into it these random plot points that they just dropped in weird places and i'm like no you already were up front that there's no plot just don't have a plot but it was weird but it essentially it's like mfmm or whatever so it's three guys one girl the guys don't do anything with each other uh they meet her at a halloween party and they're all in like masks like they're all in halloween costumes so the one guy is like scream and one guy is like jason myers or something and i don't even remember what the other guy is and they just decide that they're obsessed with her from watching her dance in the middle of the room or something like that and yeah and then she's just theirs for the night but it's way over the top and then i don't even know what happens or like what i can say without spoiling it but it just like i'm all for like touch her and die vibes but you have to build up to that kind of thing and then this was like a little gruesome a little gory out of nowhere and for nothing and i wasn't rooting for any of the characters so it just kind of gave me the ooh kind of thing like yeah but let's take a deep breath first yeah not for me not for me at all two stars on that one but it's fine did this video flipped because i really wanted to start it with my five star but scream for us i think was the first book i read in october and this is the last one i read in october so the month really did build for me and i am happy with how it ended um just for this video it ended on a sour note <laughs> but anyways that's all i got for you guys i'm sorry i didn't do my tbr if you want to yell at me in the comments go for it because i really thought that like putting it on the platform would force me to do it and i it did the opposite it really did the opposite but <laughs> it is what it is has anyone read a house of salt and sorrows and more specifically has anybody read the sequel definitely leave that in the comments below because I don't know many people that have read the sequel just because it's so new and the first book came out so long ago but i really really want to get into that one don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe i post videos every friday sometimes on tuesdays when i'm feeling it so ring that bell for notifications and you won't miss anything i'll catch you guys on the next one bye